hey there welcome to cynthia untamed if you are new here my name is cynthia nyongesa and this vlog is about leadership and highlighting hope and the stories of young africans who are positively impacting their communities next week the queen of belgium is coming to kenya yay and she'll be visiting a few projects so by the time you see this she will have left she will be meeting young people in kenya from diverse backgrounds and we will be sharing our journey towards leadership uh, what has molded us has how has our education system influenced us to be the person that we are today what created opportunities for us and what has made our lives different compared to many young people in this country so i know many young people out here are facing so many challenges one of the things I'll be talking about is when once I was in a public primary school and we did not have access to proper toilets. I remember the toilets did not have proper lighting and sometimes we'd have to go to the toilets that the class 8s used to use and uh, those ones were a bit better because the toilets that the junior ones used to use because then I was in class 5. Uh, the toilets were not very good. So sanitation is one of the things that I'll be talking about. Menstrual hygiene. Today is uh, Thursday 20, 20th of June. So she will be here next week on Wednesday 26th of June when we'll be having the conversation. And hopefully I'll have more details then. Now, aside from that, I was gifted this book. I don't know if you can see it. This book. It's called Lean In by Cheryl Sandberg. I was gifted this book last year during the Christmas season. And it's a book that I would like every young person to read, especially if you're a young woman who's just starting out her career or you're starting out new things or starting a new project. And what I liked about the book is that it really challenges young people or young women to be active towards pursuing their dreams because a lot of young women tend to think that they don't have a voice so they don't advocate for themselves they don't say what they want when they need a raise in their salary for example when they need to take up more active roles at the office or in the field or in a project that you're working on so this book explains why many women are afraid to do that i will not give all the details because i want you to read but it basically talks about how young how young women tend to have the tiara syndrome so if you don't know the tiara syndrome it's when women sit down and they wait to be told you are doing a good job or when a young person sits and waits to be told you are doing a good job sometimes nobody will tell you that but you need to keep reminding yourself that you're doing a good job so don't wait for the tiara syndrome work actively towards pursuing a goal pursuing a strategy i mean a proposal or something like that so for me that is something that i challenge myself to do this year to be an active leader because uh, a big part of my life or a few years in the past i have spent it just working on projects that already exist i'm very afraid to take up a leadership role because i'm scared of failing because if i take it up and something goes wrong then it's going to be my fault but if somebody else is leading and i just go into it and support i'm very okay with that i will be very positive i will mobilize i will fundraise i'll do everything but i don't want to be the one who's actually leading it so that i'm, I'm just free of mistakes and that's something that i told myself i will change it i will change this year so maybe as the vlog continues i will share how that has really helped me but I can tell you challenging myself to be active and to be the to be the creator of ideas has really inspired me it's really pushed me I have grown tremendously in my career I have grown tremendously in my writing I'm a better speaker I'm a better mobilizer today is Tuesday 25th of June I hope you're still following the journey the story so this is turning out to be a pretty exciting week i'm meeting lots of new people lots of people that i know before and we are still going on with the conversations around young people so i've just returned from the radisson blue hotel 
and we were meeting the country director of the World Bank. Have you heard of the competition called World Bank Blog Development? If you haven't heard of it, it's basically a platform where young people get to express themselves in 500 words. Please note that you do not have to be a blogger. As long as you are a young person, then you are qualified to participate in this competition. So it's usually open for young people between the ages of 18 and 28. And it will open up, I'm not sure when, but it's going to happen. It's going to open up sometime around the year. And guess what? If you win, you get to go to Washington, D.C. for the World Bank Spring Meetings. And you get to interact with lots of people, lots of people in development, in finance, in private sector. And you get to learn. So when I participated in the competition in 2016, I did not win. But I was a finalist. So that has given me a lot of platforms and a lot of uh, things that I've been able to do today started from that journey, which includes Cynthia Untamed. So I'd like for you to stay tuned, keep checking the World Bank Kenya platforms, and very soon you will see that. So today, basically, we were having the cohorts of winners from the year 2015 to 2019, having a conversation with the World Bank Kenya country director. And we're talking about the impact of the blog dev competition in our lives. Here's one thing I've learned in life. That sometimes opportunities come to you and they may not manifest in the way that you wish them to. But the best part is that if you utilize that platform that you get, no matter how it comes, it will take you far. Young people were talking about ways of finding uh, sustainable ways of engaging with young people, especially in matters related to development. Now, development is very broad. You can range it from uh, supporting startups or things that I do, for example, social media engagement, youth participation. I was also inspired by the fact that so many young people are also coming out to express their ideas. I mean, one person said that they come from Kangemi and they never imagine that they could get such a big platform so can you imagine can you imagine the truth of the matter is where whether you are from a rich family or a poor family or not you still have a mind i mean if there's one thing that every human being was blessed with it's a mind a mind so use it use it today is sunday 30th of june it has been a very exciting week as i had Earlier told you on, I was meeting the queen. It was very nice. Oh, trust me, I was so nervous. I couldn't decide what I wanted to wear. I had to do makeup tutorials because for me, I consider looking good all the way around, starting from my face to what I'm wearing, to my shoes, to my nails. Well, that went well eventually. And then we met the queen of Belgium at the tribe hotel. She was here visiting Kenya as the honorary ambassador for UNICEF Belgium. So she had come to Kenya to see uh, quite a number of projects in Kakuma, in Nairobi, and in Kajiado. We, we talked about many things and she was very interested to know who we are, what we do, what are our dreams, what are our goals, what are our aspirations, what are our challenges, how is it like growing up and living in Kenya as a young person. I was very psyched up and encouraged by the other young people who are there, four of them, three other ladies and a guy. And of course, these are young people who are doing exciting things, working in, in helping young people to know what sustainable development goals are, how to formulate policies. For others, they are working to reduce gender-based violence in the communities and helping children to discover their talents and of course as you know i am the blogger who's trying to be a blogger talking about leadership and skills uh, some of the other things that she actually asked was how our education system has influenced the people that we are i have managed to go to both public and private schools here in kenya and i can attest to the fact that um Children who go to private schools are sort of advantaged, more advantaged as compared to children who go to public schools. Because when you go to public schools, if you have gone to a public school, you know this, that children are so many and the teacher to student ratio is 
I mean, it's unreasonable. Sometimes you have 70 to 100 children in a class with just one teacher. In other situations, it's very hard for the teacher to identify the needs of the child because if you have 100 children and you're the only teacher, then guess what? It's going to be very difficult to identify that. But when you go to a private school, you find that there are maximum of 30 30 students or pupils in a class so the teacher is definitely able to engage one-on-one -on -one with each child in some schools they separate children according to their abilities so you find like class a is uh, children who are considered to be the brightest students who get the highest mark then class b is children who are average students and then class c is where you find children who do not score the highest marks so for me i look at it as two sides of a coin in some instances or in many instances you find that separating children like this does not actually work because you find that sometimes children who are sort of in the class c may be neglected because everyone thinks oh they are just dumb they don't know how to read they don't know how to speak they're not confident and all that but you find that if these children are mixed up and blended with with their peers then they may be able to engage and actually identify some of their talents because they are able to make friends uh, also she asked us uh, what message we would like for her to take back to her country and that was very oh i was like wow what do i say but i narrated the story of how i was not the most confident child growing up especially in high school and I told her to remind young people to take responsibility for their future and to always believe that deep within themselves there is greatness. On Saturday 29th of June, which was yesterday as I filmed this, I went back to my old school, Alliance Girls, and I think that was very nice. I don't think they could have, that, could be, that could have been a better way of ending the week but to go back to my old school, which has really molded the person that I am. I've just talked about how education systems influence the people that you become. And for me at Alliance, I was nurtured to be a leader. I was nurtured to, to know that I am a great woman, that the women who are great in our country are just ordinary people like you and me. They chose to believe in themselves and they were also at the right place at the right time and things influenced them to be great, great people. So for me, I always like to go back to my own school to talk to the girls and tell them that it is very possible. I'm very excited to be here at the Alliance Girls at my old school. Very excited to be speaking to the Form 4s. We're talking about career experiences and life experiences. I have just been sharing how I am a blogger and I work with children and young people as a youth advocate. About five years ago, I would have never imagined that I would be here today. I would be doing the things that I am doing. I would be writing because I love writing, I'll be speaking into the camera, I'll be working with children and young people, I would have graduated, in fact I didn't even think I'd get into university. So when I look at myself five years down the line, I like to go back to the girls who are there, 16 year olds, 15 year olds, 18 year olds, 13 year olds, and tell them that no matter where they are right now, it is very possible. For me, I was just sharing my career experiences, my life through university, how I started volunteering during the long holidays and during strikes and I was telling them you do not have to do the biggest thing ever it could be as simple as helping people to arrange chairs bringing in water for the guests it could start from as simple as that and I know people keep inboxing me asking me how to start volunteering for organizations trust me that is not where I started I started from community-based organizations from events at schools that is where you should be starting. Stop looking at the big organizations when you've not even tried your own school. Something else that I shared was the fact that they need to identify their dreams early in life. And for me, what I really liked about this cohort of girls is the fact that they were looking beyond careers that we, you would consider as the tra traditional careers like medicine and engineering and all. These girls are actually looking at vlogging as a career, blogging as a career artificial intelligence, acting, photography. I mean, I was so impressed and I was so amazed. Someone even came to me and asked me about fashion design and what opportunities are there. So if you're a fashion designer, just know that many girls right now 
and many young people want to get into that space so please lead the way for them they're on the way they are coming and they they're very excited to be in this platform one of the other things that the young people actually ask and this helped me to realize that young people are actually now informed please do not think that young people are lazy generation z not lazy not lazy mm -mm 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 -mm. look at them keenly again if you're raising a generation z young please look keenly again there's a girl who's in form two who actually asked me what opportunities are there for young people in the blue economy and for me i hadn't heard of the blue economy concept until last year when there was a conference happening here in nairobi the blue economy conference so you can imagine there's a high school girl who's already asking about opportunities that exist you can imagine these girls are well informed one of the other things that were also coming up was that menstrual hygiene awareness is still something that is so important young people need to know what to do when they start their period they need to know when they have an infection they need to know who they can talk to they need to know that they can seek treatment in confidence and and with the expertise that they deserve so whichever school whichever home i hope that we are going to start paying attention to sexual and reproductive health care mm -hmm. this alumni who spoke she finished high school in 1999 and she was saying she scored a b minus in kcse so you can imagine at the level of a national school how disappointing that was for her then she went on and started with a diploma and she scored well then she went on to jomo kenyatta university she started a bachelor's degree and she scored a first class honors and then she went abroad and did her masters and now she's already done her phd and now she's working with a very big organization even if your child scored less than you expected them to score last year in last year's kcse exam believe me if you encourage them and if you tell them that it is their responsibility to take charge of their future and you remind them of that i know as a parent you you might be strict on them but also be gentle you need to remind them that this is not the end remind them that as they proceed on with life there are other opportunities for them to excel not just in academics Oh